everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful across the universe cowl. We are using a really gorgeous yarn cake for this. So all this color work that you see is from our yarn cake and it transitions all by itself. So it's a really fun, relaxing and satisfying project. Now the finished piece is about 10 inches wide and has a circumference of about 55 inches. And I made it this length on purpose. You could wear it long and loose, kind of like a long necklace, or you can give it a little twist while you wear it and kind of snug it up against your neck and it kind of doubles up all those fun colors too. Now we're gonna be using a very simple stitch for this. This is uh, just some double crochets and chains and we've done it in such a way that it creates these fun eyelets. Now those of you who have been uh, watching my channel for a long time may recognize this stitch of the heathered eyelets shawl. Um, I know a lot of you made that shawl and um, I've turned that into uh, a cowl with this really fun yarn. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to get the length that you want if you'd like a certain length. We're gonna be using a five millimeter H crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook. Um, I'll put the link down below if you would like to get one for yourself as well. I also have a coupon code that you can get 15% off too. I'll put that down below. And then for our yarn, we're gonna be using a yarn called Universe by Hobie. Now I've just recently started using Hobie in the past few months and they always have the prettiest cakes. This one is rainbowy. It has some gold thread through it. It's just so much fun. So I thought it would make a perfect cowl with these color changes. Um, this is 98% acrylic, 2% polyester. And one cake of this is 462 meters or 505 yards, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. The recommended hook size for this is a 3.5 millimeter E crochet hook. Um, I will be going up to a larger hook, the five millimeter H crochet hook, because I want this to kind of have some drape to it because it is gonna go around the neck. So I am going up a hook size for that. This is a number one, super fine on the yarn weight scale. As you can see, it's uh, thin. And um, also, like I mentioned before, it's 98% acrylic, 2% polyester, and it does come in dye lots, as you can see over here below the barcode, there are some dye lots. So if you get multiple cakes of this for a project, just know that it does have dye lots. And again, it's self-striping, so it's gonna be a lot of fun and super easy as we change colors. So if you need to substitute yarn for any reason, we are gonna be using 505 yards of a super fine uh, weight yarn, and this one recommends the E 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. So if you stick with those things, you'll be just fine if you wanna mimic um, the weight of yarn that we're using here. One more thing I forgot to mention, the colorway that I have here is called Galactic. Um, it's kind of like a rainbow with gold thread, and it's color number 14. Uh, the link is found down below if you'd like to get some of this yarn for yourself. Um, and all the colorways in the universe line of this yarn have like space themed names, so it's really fun. So Galactic is what it's called. So I got my hook and my yarn, and this is a center pull cake. So I went ahead and got it started. And I'm just gonna scoot this over and we're gonna zoom way in so we can see every little stitch. Now our starting chain is 48. So what we need to do first is pull a slip knot on our hook. So leave yourself a little tail, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. And like I said, we're gonna do a starting chain of 48. So to make a chain, you're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 45, 46, 47, and 48. So here's our starting chain. I didn't make it too tight so we can work back into those chains, but you can get sort of an idea of the height of our cow because we're going to be working in rows. This will be the height and the number of rows we work will be the circumference, okay? So if you want it to be sort of loose and slouchy, um, and hang down longer, then you just work more rows. If you want it to be nice and snug up around your neck, you work less rows, okay? So let's move on to row one. 
we're gonna work three, learn how to do three rows together. And row one uh, will be the first row, and then rows two and three will be the rows that you repeat over and over for the rest of the project. So pretty easy. So for row one, what we're going to do is in the fourth chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. We're gonna go one, two, three, and four, and we're gonna work a double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around your hook, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the first two loops, wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the last two loops. Then all we're gonna do is work a double crochet in each of the chains all the way across, okay? So go ahead, we'll do a few together. So work a double crochet into the next chain. Work a double crochet into the next chain. Work a double crochet into the next chain. And then you're just gonna do this all the way across. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my double crochets. And then when we get towards the end of this row, we'll rejoin, finish up row one, and then begin row two. All right, just coming up to the end of the row, working this last couple of chains a double crochet in each one. And I just wanted to point out when I started with this yarn cake, I had, as you can see, the bottom of my chain has more of a kind of a coral and we're getting into a brighter pink now, which is really fun. These cakes, when they change the colors for you, um, it's really exciting as you're working your project to see. Okay, so moving on to row two. For row two, what we're gonna do is we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And this chain three will count as one of our double crochets. So you'll see that at the base of your chain here, there's a loop. We're not gonna work into that loop because this counts as a double crochet. So that little loop at the bottom of your chain, just kind of hop over that. Now in that next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet into that stitch, just like that. And then we're gonna create our first eyelet. We're gonna have some very simple eyelets because this is such a, let me grab it again. This is such a colorful yarn with, we have metallic thread and variegated and rainbow colors and it's a very exciting yarn. Uh, we're gonna keep our eyelets nice and simple, okay? So what we're gonna do now is create an eyelet. So chain two, one, two, and then you're gonna come back down here to your stitches and we're gonna skip two stitches, and in that next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet. And there's our first eyelet, okay? Next stitch, work a double crochet. Just like that, and go nice and slow. The yarn is nice and fine, so you wanna take your time. And then what we're gonna do is work another eyelet, and we're just gonna do this all the way across. So chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna skip two, one, two, and then work a double crochet into that next stitch. These are just really simple little decorative holes. Work a double crochet in the next stitch. So everything is in twos. We're chaining two, skipping two, working two double crochets, okay? So once again, chain two, one, two, Skip two, one, two, work a double crochet in the stitch after that, and then work a second double crochet in the stitch after that. You can see we're getting a nice little row of simple eyelets. And it's just enough interest, but it's not competing with the yarn so much. And I will say I've worked this um, eyelet stitch in solid yarn and it looks just as pretty. So if you're using a solid yarn, uh, definitely go for it because it looks pretty in a variety of different yarns, but it's not complicated to the point where it's gonna compete with the yarn, okay? So keep going with your eyelets, chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, work a double crochet into the next stitch, and we'll do this whole row together. So if you feel like you've mastered this row already, you can skip on ahead, that's totally fine. All right, so we worked a double crochet, we're gonna work a double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're gonna work our next eyelet. Chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, work a double crochet in the stitch after that. 
work a double crochet in the stitch after that. Then work your next eyelet. Chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, work a double crochet in the stitch after that. Work a double crochet in the stitch after that. I'm going to get a little bit more yarn here out of my cake. And if you see, comparing this row to our row before, it's even brighter pink. It's getting to be like a hot pink now. So just as a side note. So next eyelet, chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, work a double crochet in that stitch after that. One, and then a double crochet in that one the next stitch rather, and two. So there's two double crochets here. Work your next eyelet, chain two. One, two, skip two. One, two, and in the, in the stitch after that, work a double crochet. And then work your second double crochet in the stitch after that. Very pretty, very, very pretty progress. Okay, chain two, one, two, Skip two, one, two, and in the stitch after that, work a double crochet, work a double crochet into the next stitch. All right, we're getting towards the end here. We're in the home stretch. Chain two, one, two, come down here, skip two, work a double crochet in the stitch after that. Just like that, double crochet into the next stitch. All right, now we're at the end. We're gonna chain two, one, two, and then we're gonna skip two, and you should have one more stitch at the end of that. So work a double crochet in that last stitch of the row, and then we might need to open it up a little bit, but we're, but we're gonna work a double crochet. At the end, you'll have a turning chain. In the topmost chain of your turning chain, and you might need to kind of, I had to turn mine a little bit. It got a little bit like turned forward. That's okay. You might need to like kind of rearrange it a little bit. We're going to work in the topmost chain of our turning chain. We're going to work a double crochet to finish up the row. Okay. So let's look at our beautiful handiwork that we added for row two. And we have a little bit of um, variegated coloring. And um, like I mentioned before, I went up, um, a couple of hook sizes from the recommended and I really love how all the stitches are like loose and kind of drapey looking it's going to give it some beautiful drape around our neck and my variegated colors are sort of each row is sort of changing so I really love that okay so for row three this is the last row we're going to be learning I'm going to grab a little bit more yarn out of my cake over here what we're going to do is once again we're going to chain three one two three and turn and also, once again, this chain three counts as a double crochet. So when you're looking for your first stitch to work, what you're going to do is at the base of that chain three that you did, that stitch down there at the bottom, see that loop right there at the bottom? We're not going to worry about that because this counts as a double crochet. So go to that next stitch, and you can see, if you're having trouble locating it, you, you can see the post of that double crochet, and at the, the top of that is a loop, okay? So go ahead and work a double crochet into that next stitch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work a, uh, um, excuse, excuse me, two double crochets into this space. Remember that eyelet that we created? Right into that eyelet space, we're going to work two double crochets. Okay, so double crochet, double crochet right into that eyelet space. Okay, now work a double crochet in each one of these next two stitches. You'll see the two double crochets from the previous row. You're going to work a double crochet into the top of that first one and a double crochet into the top of the next one. And then we're at an eyelet again. So work two double crochets. In the written pattern on the blog, I refer to that to that space as the chain two space because we, we did two chains and that created that decorative hole. So that's the chain two space. We're working two double crochets into the chain two space. So if you do follow along with the written pattern, um, you'll know what I'm referring to. Okay, 
Go to the next two double crochets from the previous row and work a double crochet into that first one. First stitch, double crochet into that next stitch. Double crochet into the chain two space, that next eyelet. I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn. I'm not sure what the next color is gonna be, so it's very exciting. All right, next two stitches, work a double crochet in each one of them. So we're kind of alternating between working into stitches and spaces all the way across, okay? Work two double crochets into that chain two space. One and two. And we're gonna do this whole row together. So if you feel like you've mastered it at this point, you can keep going across um, and skip ahead. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. Work two double crochet into that chain two space, into that eyelet. One and two. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. Work two double crochets into the chain two space, into that eyelet. One and two. This pattern has lots of twos, pairs of twos in it, so it's easy to remember. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. Let me get a little bit more yarn out of my cake here. All right, now we're at the chain two space, so work a double crochet in each of the next, uh, in the chain two space, excuse me, and right into that eyelet space. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. And our pink, I've noticed, just keeps intensifying and it's getting maybe a little bit more fuchsia-like. So maybe we'll be going to the purple next. Okay, we're in the home stretch. We're getting closer to the end. Work two double crochets in that chain two space. One and two. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One double crochet two double crochet, work two double crochet into that chain two space, one and two, work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches, one and two, work two double crochet into that next eyelet, that chain two space, one and two. And work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. There we go. Work a uh, two double crochet into that next space, that eyelet chain two space. Okay, and now we are at the end and I'm gonna show you how to finish off the row. So we have, um, if you kind of open it up a little bit, sometimes those turning chains can get kind of smushed at the end there, but if you kind of open it up when you get to the end, we're gonna work a double crochet into that last stitch that you see. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the top of the turning chain. Um, that turning chain we did in the last row, locate the very top. And we're going to work a double crochet into that topmost chain from our turning chain, okay? And make sure when you insert your hook that you're catching two loops so it doesn't stretch out. If you catch one loop, sometimes it can pull out and distort your stitch. Okay, so same thing we did last time, work a double crochet in that topmost chain, okay? So as you can see, we are experience, experiencing some beautiful color changes. Now I can see in my cake that I'm gonna be going to purple next, and I'm really excited. I love when that happens, it's so much fun. Um, but we still have a simple enough stitch that will be nice and relaxing for you to complete and also show off those beautiful colors. So this is a wonderful project for a cake. Now, what you're gonna do to keep going with your cowl is to keep repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again. And what you'll have is a series of beautiful eyelets all the way across. 
And so keep going, and then I'm gonna add some more length and go through this cake a little bit more, and we will rejoin in just a moment, and um, we're gonna seam it together. Now, I wanted to um, point out that um, when you are wrapping this up, when you're running out of yarn and you're just about done, try to end on row three for a more finished look. Um, see, we just did row three, see how, see how it's more solid? If you end on row three, it's gonna give it a more finished look, but when we seam it together, you're gonna have this solid end and this solid end, and it's gonna be much easier to join them together and seam them neatly. Um, if you end it on the eyelet row, it would be a little bit more difficult to seam. So I do recommend, now if you run out of yarn and you kind of get into a pinch, you can still seam and it's no big deal. But to maybe make your life a little bit easier, um, try ending on row three um, and we'll seam it up in just a moment. So keep going with rows two and three, two and three, and we'll rejoin in just a minute. Just working that very last stitch of our row. And again, like I mentioned before, you'll want to end on the row that's all double crochets to give you more of a solid edge, okay? So let's cut our yarn, we're now finished. I don't have quite enough to start a new row. So what we're gonna do is fasten off, so wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it all the way through the loop and tighten. And I use just one cake, so I have two tails to weave in, but if you have more, um, you know, you want to get those taken care of. So let's look at this for just a minute. Look how beautiful these colors are. They just uh, blend so effortlessly and this little sparkle throughout, it's just absolutely magical. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go down one end and we're gonna grab our tail, our tapestry needle, and I'm gonna weave it in one direction, go nice and slow. We have some open stitches here, so we don't want it to show. So just go nice and slow through the middle of the, all those stitches. And I like to go in one direction and then come back in the other direction with my tail. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors and give it a little bit of a snip. And then where we started down here, we're going to thread our needle here. And because I have lots of different colors here, this is kind of a coral color on my needle right now. I wanna stay along this coral edge here as much as possible because then you'll see this different color traveling through um, some of your stitches and you want it to blend as much as possible when you do your finish work, okay? So I'm gonna go in one direction like I did before and come back in the other direction with my tail. And then, just give it a little snip with scissors. Now, if you made your strip very, very long, um, you can make yours into a scarf. This could really function like a small scarf, but I really want to seam my ends together and make this into a cowl. Um, I really love cowls because when you're wearing it and moving all around, it doesn't fall off, it stays around your neck. But you could very easily make this into a scarf. Just to give you also an idea of the dimensions and how far I crocheted, I got a width of about 10 inches and I kept working my rows um, until I had a length of, of about 55 inches. That way, when it's seamed, you can wear it long and loose or I wanted to be able to um, double up. And you can see when you double up, it looks even more colorful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is seam the ends together. Now again, this is totally optional, so you can um, omit this part if you just wanna wear yours as a scarf. Um, alternatively, you could also sew a couple of buttons to one edge and make it uh, kind of the best of both worlds. You could button it together to be a cow or wear it open like a scarf. Now I am going to, the fronts of these double crochets when I did the solid row, I'm gonna uh, make that the front for me. Um, it is reversible, but it looks slightly different. I don't know if you can see, but it, it does look very slightly different on both sides. So I am going to make, um, where I did the solid rows, when they face me, I'm gonna make that the outside. So I'm gonna actually turn my outside inside, <laughs> not to make it too confusing, but um, we're gonna turn it inside out. So whatever side you want uh, facing out, the public side of your piece, um, 
turn it inside because we're gonna seam it together and then turn it right side out when we're done seaming, okay? So sandwich your ends together. And then I have just a little bit of scrap yarn um, left over. I'm gonna grab a piece uh, about three feet long or so, give or take. Thread your tapestry needle and we're just gonna do a very quick little whip stitch, okay? All the way down our work. Now, we could have done a shortcut and cut our tail when we weaved our ends in. We could have left our tail very, very long and just used that to seam, but you can do it this way too. Either way is fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in that first corner of our work and the corner of the other layer, and we're gonna pull it almost all the way through like this, and we're gonna tie it into a knot. And do a couple, because this is something that you're gonna wear, it needs to be hard working. So just do a couple strong little knots, and then we'll take care of that end later. And then what we're gonna do is just go through, and let me zoom in way in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're just going to go through both layers here, just like a sandwich. And all the whip stitches, if you're not familiar, it's just kind of like a spiral through your work. So we're just making this little spiral through our work. And we're gonna do this all the way down, okay? So just go all the way across with your whip stitch. And my tail is sort of getting in the way right now, but we'll weave that in in a minute. And we're just gonna go all the way across, okay? So go ahead and work across. And then when we get towards the end, I'm going to um, show you how to finish it up and it will be ready to wear. All right, so we worked our whip stitch all the way across. And I would recommend as you get about halfway across, turn it right side out and just peek at how your, uh, your seam is looking because sometimes it shows or it's not kind of catching the loops right and it could leave like a weird kind of ridge in your work. But um, just peek at your progress as you work until, um, not until you get to the end. You know, you wanna look at it a little bit before that. So I'm just gonna work my last stitch and I like to, whenever we have crochet, it doesn't make like this really sharp 90 degree angle. It sort of curves at the ends. So I like to, um, work my last couple of stitches like off to the side just slightly so that I can, and my needle fell out, but that's okay. But so that I can um, just catch those uh, sides and make them look kind of flush to one another. Now, before we pull it all the way through and there's still a little loop there, send your tail through there. and We'll be able to fasten it off, okay? So I just pulled my tail the rest of the way through that loop and I'm just gonna snug it down there. And then, hopefully your needle stayed on, mine fell off. But while it's still here, right in front of you, go ahead and weave that end in. Now I'm gonna weave my end in through the aqua part of my piece so that it blends a little bit more nicely. I don't wanna go through this pink side because it would show. So like we did before, we're just gonna go in one direction And it got snagged on something. There we go. Oh, there's a little, there's a little knot. That's okay. We're about to snip that. And then we're going to come back in the other direction just to lock it in place a little bit. And that, that knot caught once again. There we go. And then you can grab your scissors and scoot everything out of the way here. And whoops. I forgot about this last tail. Let's get that woven in really quick. It's uh, the turquoise color like the other side. I'm just gonna very quickly weave this in because I am very excited to turn this right side out and see how beautiful everything looks. Now you can kind of see the whip stitch on this side, but on the other side, it will be more um, camouflaged, okay? So, whoops. My needle just fell on the floor. Okay, so let's get our little seam all straightened out. And I'm gonna turn my cowl. And as you can see, our seam is um, seamless looking. <laughs> so let's look how beautiful. I just, I'm loving these colors. They're so happy and fun. And our cowl is complete. So, you can, again, like I said, you can wear it long and loose like this, or you can give it a little twist while it's on your neck and wear it kind of doubled up like that if you want to kind of snug it up. So that is how you crochet the Across the Universe cowl. 
Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.